Hello, this is Brian with uh, RenderMan for Blender, and today we're going to talk about denoising um, in RenderMan for Blender. Um, so this was a question asked by one of the uh, YouTube channel viewers. Um, if you have any other questions or topics you might want me to cover, um, let me know in the comments below. All right, so let's get into it. Uh, noise is a problem when we are rendering. Uh, people who've used cycles have probably had a uh, an issue with with noise in their renders, and um, pretty much any modern renderer, you will get noise if you uh, render with low sample counts. So um, let's get into what noise is and where it comes from. Uh, I have a scene set up here. It's pretty simple. There's a, um, a monkey head here, and then there's a hemi light, which is an image has an image texture, so sort of like a um, HDRI image on the on the hemi light, and then the area light here, and then our cameras over here. So um, both cycles and RenderMan are path tracers, and um, a lot of other modern renders are path tracers as well. What that means is there'll be camera there'll be camera rays traced from the camera here, and where they hit a piece of geometry, then that piece of geometry will sample the area around it. It might hit the lights, it might not hit the lights, or uh, it might hit other geometry. But anyways, wherever the camera rays hit a piece of geometry, they're going to try to figure out what the color reflected from there is. So if I go and hit render here, um, we're going to do this is a very low sample count uh, at 16 samples. And what we'll see is that in some areas, maybe we'll get the rays traced off of here hitting a light, or maybe it won't. Um, and we'll see this sort of like high frequency uh, noise here from um, from corresponding pixels, whether they hit hit a light spot or not, um, and this is fairly typical. So normally, the the answer of how to fix this is um, uh, is to add more samples. So right now we only have sixteen samples, and what that means is that for every pixel, there's going to be sixteen rays that are going to be shot at that at that pixel or wherever the wherever the ray hits here and um and basically like the the samples from here are going to sample out into the environment and whatever they hit out there so sometimes they hit stuff sometimes they don't and that's why we end up with different colors or or noise there so if we just added more samples we would get a better we would get less noise there um and uh, so here's 16 samples. We'll go through and zoom in a little bit here. Uh, here's 32 samples, a little bit better. You see a little less noise. And 64, and then 128. So we see that with each time that we double the number of samples, we get less noise. So that's an easy way when people say, like, hey, my render is noisy. What's a quick way to get rid of it? Usually the answer is to add more samples. Now, what's the problem with adding more samples? Well, it takes a longer time to render it. Um, and generally speaking, it's going to take twice the amount of time if you double the number of samples, because it's doing twice the amount of work um, in the processor. So um, as you can see, as we go and double the number of samples here, um, here we're doubling the number of samples, uh, doubling the amount of time for the render, it seems like it's cutting the noise maybe in half, but that's a diminishing return, right? Um, it If you have a render that takes 10 minutes and then you want to cut the noise in half, it's going to take about 20 minutes. You know, these are just ballpark figures. Um, it's going to take about 20 minutes to get half the amount of noise. If you have a render that takes four hours to get the half amount of noise, it's going to take eight hours to, uh, to, to render it. So as you get like, uh, more and more complex and as your renders get longer, it's going to take you even longer to get less noise. Um, so a, a solution that a lot of people have come up with is denoising. Um, now if I just went and there's actually a denoise filter in Photoshop um, and a lot of sort of image programs that will go and like take away noise from your from your photos that you take with your iPhone that have a lot of noise in them because you took them in low light. Um, 
And that filter, basically what it does is if we went and looked at the pixels really close here, it will say, hey, this picture, this pixel is really light. Let's look at the pixels around it um, and see if they're light as well. And if not, we just sort of average in this area around this pixel. Now that works okay, and then it just sort of blurs everything. But the problem is, what happens if we're looking at a pixel like right here, like right on this line, um, and then we look at the pixels around it, we might say, oh, wait a minute, there's this pixel's really light, but this pixel's really dark right next to it, so let's just blur across them. Well, we'll end up with a with an image that's really blurry, and we're going to lose a lot of the definition in our in our um, in our image. So, like, I have a pattern here on the on the uh, monkey's head, and you know, it's a pretty high frequency pattern. If we just went and blurred everything across there, we're going to lose quite a bit of it. So that's where um, the denoise program comes to the rescue. Denoise um, was a program that was invented by uh, well, it was, a, it was a paper written by um, Disney Research Zurich, um, and it was used first in the Disney animation um, movie uh, Big Hero 6. So basically what it, what it does is, in, in addition to rendering out our RGBA image here, it also renders out a bunch of different um, side images. Like, for example, it'll render out the diffuse amount, and the specular amount and does those all to their own their own pieces and then it also renders out an albedo color so al albedo color is just a surface color of the of all the the surfaces in the uh, in the image here so you know an unlit basically it's just rendering out the color texture of of everything in the scene so now if you imagine what what we could do is we could go and use this color here as a metric for when we go and do the the denoising of the image and we say like okay we know what the surface color is here there's a black line don't smear across that black line is sort of a simplistic view of what it's doing um, but the long story short here is that a lot of uh, programs that say that they're doing denoising and not using the surface color um, they're all they're basically doing is blurring things so um, the denoise technology, like I said, was developed at Disney Zurich, and we have it as part of RenderMan. And it's pretty easy to set up, actually. So um, we had our image here that was 16 samples. Um, now all we have to do if we want to turn on denoising is let's go back to Blender here. And you can see there's a button right here under the render settings to say denoise as a post process. Now it's going to run as a post process. So it means after the render is done, it's going to actually go and do the render. And again, we're using a very low sample count here of 16, just because um, you know I want to show how it how it works and do it in real time. And um, you know we don't want to sit here. But normally you'd use higher sample counts than this. So what it's going to do is it's rendering now, and it's going to write out all that data. One downside of it is that you don't get the quick feedback until the end of the render. So you see now the end of the render is coming up, and then it writes out the image for you. And you can see it's still running something here. That's because it's running, like, like it says here, this is a post-process to go and filter um, the data from this. Um, so it's going to filter that and then send the filtered image back here for us to see. Um, so, so basically, it it sets up all the all the automatic outputs like the albedo color, like I said, and the specular, the diffuse amount. It sets all that all up, and then runs the post process automatically for you, um, so that you can, um, it, and then it will give you back the the filtered image. Um, Something else to keep in mind is, you know, denoising isn't perfect when it has bad information. So I really wouldn't recommend doing it on the really low sample counts, like 16, like I just did. But we'll see how it works here. So this is pretty good. It's a little blurry and blocky here. Again, that's because we're using low sample counts. Um, but anything more than, like, 32 samples, it should be fine. 64 samples. So this was the denoised image. If we zoom in, not too... Uh, not too noisy, a little bit right here, but again, we're only using 16 sample counts. Um, and um, compared to what it originally was, this was undenoised, and this is with denoise. 
and it doesn't add a lot of time to the to the uh, render to do um, to do the denoising. The nice part about the denoising is it's more it's more bound on the the size of the image than the number of samples you're doing. So if you're doing it, um, you know, a huge image, it's going to take longer to denoise it. But if you're uh, if you're doing a you know 120 samples, it's not going to be a longer it's not going to be a longer denoise process just because you did more samples. Um, the denoise process should be strictly bound by the number of of uh, pixels that you're doing. Um, the other thing to keep in mind, like I said, you don't get the quick feedback, but normally I would recommend using the denoise for your sort of final rendered images um, versus the um, uh, versus just your preview renders. So what I would do is um, you know do your preview renders with this denoise off, and then once you say like okay, I think the lighting's about where I want to do, turn this on and then run your final renders. Um, and and yeah, so that is the denoise program. Now there's some more complex denoise um, issues, but um, we're gonna take a quick break here, and then uh, we'll get into those. So just to, just as a preview, what we're going to get into is we can actually denoise some of the um, the AOVs. So like if we wanted to denoise the diffuse AOV, we could do that, and then also. We'll talk about cross-frame denoising, which is denoising when we have motion blur in the scene. Okay, so that will be it for this scene, um, and we'll get into the more advanced topics. Okay, so now we're getting into some of the more uh, advanced topics for denoising. Um, all of these are using the external rendering feature in PR man. And similar to denoising, this is more of an advanced feature that you probably only use for um, final rendering, but it's really nice for sort of spooling uh, batch renders. Okay, so first thing you're going to want to do is go to, um, in the render settings here, there's a thing called external rendering. And as it notes here, um, all the rendering from external rendering will not go back into Blender. So if you're rendering an image, it's not going to load it back into your um, uh, the image editor in Blender. But it's going to allow us a lot more sort of advanced options that we couldn't fit into um, Blender because they just don't really work with within Blender's um, API. So the external rendering, you see all these other options to check. Um, crop up here and um, so right now I, ha I set a a uh, uh, animation here of a um, little moving little moving monkey head here um, so I'm going to set the external rendering to render that animation I'm just going to do frame 8 to 10 um, spooling the job I'm going to do it through our um, local queue which is sort of our this little queue program that comes with um, uh, RenderMan Pro Server um, and then back to denoising. Um, so we have some more denoising options when we do external rendering. So we're going to turn this on. Oh, and also we want to turn on motion blur because it's going to become important here. Um, so my my little monkey head that's moving, I'm going to be able to uh, sort of see it moving there. So normally when you do external rendering, you're rendering to files because you want to like save the animation somewhere. So you know, wouldn't normally render to it. Um, which was that frame buffer tool that we also ship here. But um, so normally we'll just set it to render to OpenEXR. So what we're going to do is turn on denoising. Um, and then so now we see there's more options here for our denoising. First one here is the use GPU for denoising. As of RenderMan 21, the you can actually denoise using the GPU on your computer. This only works for GPUs that support CUDA. Um, which basically means NVIDIA cards, and it only works for certain NVIDIA cards. You can just leave it on um, because if the denoise program detects you have a GPU which doesn't support it, it will just use the CPU. Um, so you can use that. It, it basically use it use the GPU if it's possible. So you can leave that on. Um, and then cross-frame denoise is the one that we wanted to talk about here. Cross-frame denoise is basically what what it's going to do. I'm going to start the render while I'm talking here. Um, what the cross frame denoise is going to do is, as we're doing our denoising, and because we have motion blur turned on, um, 
when we have an area that's blurred, uh, we would want to uh, take into account the blur for our denoising, and we want to look at the frame ahead and frame behind um, for doing the denoising. So what cross frame denoise does is it basically does just that. Okay, so here's my job in um, in local queue, and local queue again is a really cool tool. Um, and if I expand the job here, we can see there's a couple PRMAN processes. So the first PRMAN process is happening here. Um, and we are, the first frame is rendering. I only did three frames rendering. And then the second frame renders. And then it goes back and does a denoise command. And then the third frame renders. And then it does a denoise command. And then it does another denoise command. And you notice we're doing the cross frame denoise. So what's actually happening is. After the, after the second frame renders, it's trying to denoise the first frame, and it needs both the before and after frame to do the denoising, the cross-frame denoising. So after we have the second frame done, we can go and denoise the first frame. After the third frame is done, we can denoise the second frame, and then we can also denoise the third frame. Um, so what that's going to do is just going to compare the before and after frames when it's doing the denoising. And I'll let this go here, but I'm going to show you basically the results. So here we are. Here's basically what we have um, before. This is, or well, this is the this is the results. And you see we have some motion blur in here, and then the second frame and the third frame frame motion blur. But it's taking into account what the state is before and after. And this is actually the denoise is actually better when it's when it's able to do that because it's able to compare across frames. Um, what the what the sort of data is uh, for the um, uh, for the for the frame, so it's it's it actually works a lot better when you're able to do cross frame denoising. And a lot of times when you're rendering animation, you would want to turn that on. Again, probably only only going to do this for um, uh, for sort of like a final render. Um, and just keep in mind, you're going to have a lot less noise for your final render versus um, the, your test renders. So the last uh, option here is called process denoisable AOVs. And what this does is if we turn this on, it's going to allow us to denoise um, AOVs that, uh, uh, that are denoisable. So let's say you want to you, you want to get diffuse output. So let's add a diffuse output here um, in our pass editor. Now what's going to happen is it's going to denoise that diffuse output as well. So if I go and look at what we get out here, um, we would get out something like this, uh, where we have a uh, a diffuse output that is that is as what has this filtered name at the end of it. Um, so the original diffuse render here was kind of noisy, and then if we look at the filtered output, it is it is um, denoised as well. So again, that's the um, that is the process denoisable AOVs um, option. Again, all of these are only available in external rendering, but they're uh, pretty cool options. So wrapping up, um, those are that's all the denoise um, options you have. Uh, if you have any other questions or want me to cover any other topics, just leave comments below. And thanks for watching.